Fox News alert. Growing fallout now after violence rocked the July 4th weekend in parts of the country. Many of the nation's largest cities are struggling to contain a surge in crime amid a rash of finger pointing among those in charge. The numbers are staggering. More than 260 people have been killed in shootings across the country this weekend alone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno. And here today, my co-host Kaylee McEnany, anchor of Fox News at Night and chief legal correspondent Shannon Bream, host of Kennedy on Fox Business, Kennedy, and in the center virtual seat, former education secretary and Fox News contributor Bill Bennett. First, in Chicago, police say the weekend was the city's deadliest this year. 100 people total were shot and 18 killed, a six-year-old girl among those wounded in the shootings. And in that same location, eight hours earlier, a five-year-old girl was shot. Two Chicago police officers were also shot and wounded yesterday while trying to disperse a crowd. In Houston, one police officer was shot. In Milwaukee, two police officers were wounded in a fireworks attack. And in Las Vegas, one police officer was shot and another wounded. In New York City, police say at least 26 people were shot over the holiday weekend, and the numbers of shootings rising more than 42 percent year to date. Brazen looting taking place in San Francisco yesterday as thieves target a Neiman Marcus store and can be seen taking off with merchandise. Mr. Secretary, I'd like to start with you on this. These numbers are frankly staggering. Yes, they are staggering. Let me say, too, not only uh, Secretary of Education, I was the first drug czar, so we dealt with crimes of a particular sort then, so I have some familiarity. If you look at national numbers and trends, we're still below where we were in the, low, in the early 90s, but then it dropped dramatically, uh, and now we're seeing it surge and surge over the weekend. There's a particular character to these crimes, however, I'd point out. One, they are blatant. You use the word brazen. Uh, we're seeing a lot in broad daylight. We're seeing a lot in all the neighborhoods uh, of a big city like, uh, like New York and even spreading out uh, in Chicago. The second thing, and this cannot be discounted, uh, is the presence of the police and, in some cases, the absence of the police because of efforts to defund the police. Uh, it's a terrible situation. We've got to get a hold of it. Here's the good news. We know how to attack crime. We did it uh, in the mid-'90s. And crime went down. It went way down. We can do it again. It's going to require not just a refunding of the police. It's going to require, in some cities, special incentives for the police. You've seen these incentives, uh, ladies, uh, you know, for people to go back to work at burger places and, and, and fast food places. We're going to need some incentives to keep uh, those men and women on the job and bring new and qualified people in. Otherwise, these numbers, which you just reported, will be small as we go into the late summer. Mm. And following up on that, Secretary, uh, do you see that happening? If it's so clear of, of how to combat this surge and how we did it in the mid-'90s, but I think the, the fear is that those won't be implemented and that this trend will continue sharply rising, unfettered, especially within this administration. Well, a short answer is it depends on whether the people in charge of these cities, city councils and mayors, largely blue, largely Democratic, almost uh, uh, 95 percent so, see the truth and do what needs to be done. Again, the answer is not complex. The question is, is one of willingness. But you take a case like San Francisco or Los Angeles, where the prosecutors don't even want to uh, put these uh, criminals behind bars, and you can see the reluctance. This is where, and I think this is going to be a theme for this show as we get into other issues, the people have to speak. Recalls, elect other people, push for people to step down. You have the wrong officials running uh, cities in many American places. And, Shannon, some people spoke in a certain poll that just came out between ABC News and WAPO that indicated that 48 percent of Americans disapprove of President Biden's handling of the mm -hmm. rising crime across the country. Only 38 percent actually approve. Yeah, and it's tricky because now we've had this conversation about defund the police, and there's all kinds of pointing fingers, but there's all kinds of tape out there of people actually saying those things, headlines where people said, yeah, that's actually what we mean. So now we see city after city either discussing refunding, reinstating funding to the police, 
or they've actually done it. Uh, places they've talked about it or done it. I, we're talking about New York. We're talking about Oakland. We're talking about Baltimore. Just last week, you had a judge rule in Minneapolis telling the local leaders that they have to hire more police officers. But to what the secretary said, how do we do that when we're having mass layoffs, early retirements, people who these people do not make a fortune and they are heroes, the vast majority of them who suit up every day, never knowing if they're going to see their families again for 50, 60, $70,000, they're gonna risk their lives. And not only that, everything that they do will be questioned uh, and it should be. They are in very delicate, very dangerous situations. But this impacts beyond law enforcement and people feeling safe. It's going to be a big political issue going into 22. But also, it's the economy of a lot of these places. We see, like San Francisco, there are uh, chains of drugstores that are closing down, saying we can't afford to be open. Target just announced all of its stores in San Francisco, which most of them were open 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., are now going to 9 to 6. So at night when you get off work, if you work a daytime job, you're not going to be able to go to Target at night in San Francisco. They said their employees do not not feel safe coming to work, there are real ripple effects to not enforcing the law or prosecuting or charging people. And Kennedy, as we discuss sort of the, the local level and people rising up and um, holding their city councils accountable, there's a real tension between that and a lot of the, for example, Democrats on the progressive left calling for federal intervention, calling to have the answer be in the federal government's hands. And a lot of that, too, will play out in Congress as people leave these major cities to smaller suburbs, smaller communities outside these metropolitan areas where crime is enforced or the laws are enforced where law enforcement is appreciated and where people see that they have more control over where their tax dollars are going. Yeah, and you bring up a great point, Emily, and uh, the secretary touched on this a little bit. It's the city councils. It's not necessarily the mayors. It's the city councils uh, in places like right. Minneapolis and Portland that have a real mm -hmm. activist agenda and far less accountability because it's a group of people. So the accountability is sort of dispersed throughout them. Uh, so, you know, they come in with these these platforms and they are driven to impose this super progressive agenda, which is clearly making these cities less safe. And it is throwing law enforcement and policing and even, you know, basic livability completely out of balance. And what we have to find is instead of an agenda, we have to find a good balance where people can coexist in cities large and small together. And I want to go back to something. It was a point that Shanna made last time we were on. And, and this is something that I think is critical. It is a basic respect for life. It is a basic decency. Mm -hmm. and, and how do we go about bringing that back? That's part of the balance. That's part of the critical balance. I'm not sure, uh, but that seems to be the missing element here. And with this, this further radicalization of city councils, uh, there is a greater disconnect. So we have to reconnect. And, you know, of course, it starts with parenting. It starts with families. It starts with how, you know, we, we all interact with each other on a day-to-day -day basis. But we do have to get back to, to something that will keep us together instead of dividing us apart. And Kaylee, where is the media on all of this? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, the media has largely ignored this issue, and I hope that we see some media scrutiny of the Biden administration's role in this and the left's role in ignoring the defund the police movement or propelling it, I should say. Uh, but, you know, we'll see because we see in polling that this is a two decade high of concern for crime in, in people's cities. So a two decade high of concern. And I hope the media's lens moves to reflect this. It was a year ago today that I stood at the White House podium. And rather than getting questions about the deaths and the slaughter in our streets, which also happened last Fourth of July, I got more than a dozen questions about the Confederate flag. And I ended the briefing mm. saying, you know, where were, the, where, where were the questions about the children dying in the streets? Where was the question about Sequoia Turner, who we just passed her year anniversary of her passing, an eight-year-old girl in Atlanta who was slaughtered in the car with her mother? Her dad said this. They say Black Lives Matter. You killed a child. She didn't do nothing to nobody. Where was the questioning about her life that is propelled for a year? We now know more than 149 kids have been shot in New York alone. Uh, these are the kinds of questions I hope are raised in the briefing today. I'm not hopeful uh, because we know this is a, an issue where Biden's not doing too well on, only 38 percent approve. But I hope we have a press corps that finally asks some questions on behalf of these kids and other innocent victims. Hope so, too. Mr. Secretary, final thoughts. 
Yeah, well, just one thing, uh, talking about press conferences, the White House, a couple of weeks ago, Peter Ducey asked uh, uh, the, Miss, uh, the, the, the press secretary, uh, Saki. Uh, what's her name, Jen? Jen Psaki. Jen Psaki. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what about, you know, how come no Democrats speak out against, uh, you know, defunding the police? How come they're all in favor of defunding the police or you can't find a Republican? She said actions speak louder than words. Remember that? And there's all this mm -hmm. money going out. Well, in response to Shannon's question, let's use some of that money. Raises for police, incentives for police to stay on the job, incentives for people to get in. Otherwise, we're going to have a worse weekend in August and September than we had this past one. Just a warning.